Now, I would request and invite Comrade Dipankar Bhattacharya, General Secretary, CPIM, CPIML Liberation, to address this inaugural session of the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of India, Marxist. Mr. Chairman, members of the outgoing Central Committee of the CPIM, leaders of the left parties, Comrade uh, Sudhakar Reddy, Comrade uh, Shiva Shankaran, Comrade uh, Manoj Bhattacharya, Comrade Asit Bhattacharya, delegates uh, to the 22nd Congress of the CPIM, guests and friends. It gives me great pleasure to extend my warm revolutionary greetings to all of you. I'm really happy that uh, I'm here in Hyderabad in the midst of you. So thank you for inviting me. And let me also take this opportunity to thank uh, the CPIM leadership for accepting our invitation and sending Comrade Salim to our recently concluded 10th Party Congress in Mansa, Punjab. In Hyderabad, we always feel proud of the legacy of the great Telangana movement. From the days of the great Telangana upsurge to the days of Naxalwari and Srikakulam, right down to the present phase, this is an area of great and continuous revolutionary heritage of the communist movement. When in Hyderabad, I also remember Rohit Devula, the young scholar who came to study in this city, who had great dreams, but who became victim of an institutional martyr. I call him a martyr, and his martyrdom triggered the present phase of the student upsurge in this country. So my salute to Rohit Dhamula. Comrades, uh, we all know this after your party congress, the CPI is also likely shortly scheduled to hold its party congress in Kerala. Unfortunately, it won't be possible for me to personally be present in the CPI congress. So I take this opportunity to extend my Best wishes to Comrade Sudhakar Reddy for the success of the CPI Congress as well. We are keenly aware of the challenging situation that faces us today. At perhaps no previous point in time since 1947 have we experienced such sustained fears and simultaneous assault on every aspect of our existence as a constitutional republic. The recently concluded uh, 10th Congress of the CPIML identified this present juncture as nothing short of the rise of fascism in India and we have called for unleashing a determined resistance of the people to halt and defeat this fascism as urgently and decisively as we can. Now, when we talk of defeating fascism, we are not talking of merely defeating the fascist forces in this or that election, in this or that state, or at the center. We are talking of pushing them back on the ground. We are talking of relegating the fascist forces back from the center to the periphery where they once belonged. And this can only be achieved with a powerful resurgence of the left. A strong and assertive left leading a powerful anti-fascist counter-offensive is the need of the hour. And let me assure you that the CPIML is committed to doing all it can to foster ever-growing unity and cooperation among the entire range of left forces in India to effect a leftward shift to the political balance in the country. Fascism thrives on aggressive extra-parliamentary mobilization and whipping up reactionary social frenzy. In our country, 
it revolves primarily around an anti-Muslim, anti-Dalit axis. To resist and defeat fascism, the focus of the left must also be on extra-parliamentary struggles. We are glad that the unity of the left forces has once again begun to be strengthened through shared struggles and joint marches on the streets. Let me tell you, quite frankly, in my interaction with the left ranks, with left-leaning people across the country, I have found very little demoralization about the electoral losses in West Bengal or Tripura. But what I have found, and what really makes me hopeful and inspires me, is the tremendous appreciation and for and hope and pride in the Kisan Long March in Maharashtra from Nashik to Mumbai. The present marches and demonstrations in Rajasthan, in Himachal, in Delhi, in Punjab, in Bihar, 